And so um, just realizing for me that it's okay to not have the answers and it's okay to have faith in yourself, to have faith in your higher power and to, to move and take steps forward even when you're scared or even when you're not sure that the step you're taking is the correct step. But just to keep moving has been the biggest transformation and realization that I've had to date in my career. Today's podcast guest tells us about getting beyond self-doubt, getting beyond considering yourself a poser, to becoming someone who at an early age of only 26 has traveled to more places than I have and probably a lot of our listeners have. Finding yourself in a foreign country, not being able to speak the language, uh, finding her way all the way around on a first trip that has led her all over the world since then, traveling the world, just soaking up knowledge and experience everywhere she goes. She tells us that we should start networking up, that we should be empowering ourselves and find ways to prove yourself more independent. Today's guest is AGC member Samantha Raymond with World Ventures. My name's Travis Sims, and I am the founder and CEO of AGC Accelerated Global Connections. And this is the AGC Experience. Our lives are a series of choices. Each choice leads to a result. Would you like to easily know which choices are the right life choices for you? If you've never met Amy Tyson, owner of Infinity Life Design, make it a priority to connect with her. Amy is a master of feng shui and bat zi, which she calls destiny analysis. She assists her clients in understanding the hidden forces that are influencing their lives. A destiny reading with Amy is like reading a book all about you. She highlights which decisions will bring you to your fullest potential and which choices will lead you down a path of obstacles. If you're struggling with a challenge or you want to lift your life even higher, get connected with Amy at Infinity Life Design on facebook.com slash Infinity Life Design or subscribe to her online newsletter at infinitylifedesign.com and connect in with your infinite life. Super excited to have Samantha Raymond as a guest on the AGC Experience podcast show. Samantha, you're one of my just trusted people that I bounce ideas off of. I mean, when I first got the concept for AGC and I, I called you up and we met at a coffee shop <laughs> and I said, hey, I've got this idea and I've got this thing that I'm getting ready to do and I'd love to get your take on it. I'd love you to be a part of it. And you, you looked at what we were doing and immediately said yes. And I, I just got to tell you how much that's meant to me. And uh, just being able to have people like you, the quality of you, uh, to be able to have that, that friendship and relationship that we have. And I'm excited for our audience at the AGC Experience Podcast Show to be able to learn more about you your business and what you do and how you're making a difference in the world. So please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. Fantastic. Well, first, I want to give the credit right back to you, Travis. I am honored that of all the people you've known that you chose to to work with me to begin with, I held you in a very high regard in my circle. You're a very impressive person. You've always gone full out in everything you've ever done. Um, you're a very goal-oriented person. And just to be able to surround myself with people like you and to have you seek to spend time with me as well was just a huge honor. So oh, thank, thank you. you for that. Thank you for having me on this podcast today. I can't wait to kind of delve into uh, more of what we do and why AGC has helped us grow so much as well. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. So, yes. so tell us, I mean, you're, you're a young entrepreneur and yes. you're, you're a trendsetter and you're doing so many amazing things. Thank How you. did you find your way to the business world? So it's, it's a great question, and I kind of want to start by uh, sharing a little story. Yeah. So I want to take a throwback to my very first time traveling by myself. Um, it's it's not it's a little scary, right? Traveling by yourself, getting on a plane by yourself, things like that. But now I was in a foreign country with a twelve hour time difference, and I didn't speak a lick of the language other than hello and thank you. 
Oh, boy. So I was in Thailand, and um, I had originally started traveling with a girlfriend of mine who was a very experienced traveler, so that was pretty comfortable. And I actually had about five more days off than she did. And so when we get to the airport to leave to go home, she said, why don't you just stay? And I thought about it, and my adrenaline started pumping, and I was like, well, I don't even know where to go. So she had me download an app. And that kind of helped you with hotels. And she told me a street name where all these hotels were located. So feeling confident and feeling brave and excited, I hopped in a taxi and drove, you know, two hours to this street. And I have, you know, my nice travel pro luggage that easily costs a couple hundred dollars in the set, not to mention anything I have inside by myself as a woman walking down the street for two hours because I quickly realized that a hotel in the United States versus a hotel in Thailand look very different. There's no big 40-story building with a huge entryway and a fountain in the middle when huh? you're in Thailand, right? So I, uh, at first it's fun and it's, it's exciting and I'm kind of wandering up and down the street trying to figure out where to go. And then, you know, it starts to get a little bit darker and um, a little, um, it's like a little golf cart. It's called a tuk-tuk. comes riding up and it's decked out like it's some crazy holiday with flowers and little hula girls all over it. And this man saying, come with me. I'll help you find a hotel. He says it's five minutes away and he wants to charge me 20 US dollars, which is just about as much as I paid on the entire two hour taxi ride to get to the street. Yeah. So I knew I was being scammed. Oh boy! And I also didn't really trust this guy. So I, I kind of politely declined there. And then another gentleman said, stops um, walking and he doesn't really speak English and then a policeman comes over and so I'm surrounded by three gentlemen and I don't really trust police in foreign countries you know a lot of times you have to be very careful with that as well as well so I'm getting really nervous at this point and definitely questioning my decision to travel by myself at all yeah and a cute little Thai woman, probably no more than five feet tall with short, dark hair, straight, comes over and she's holding hands of about a four-year-old boy, child, her child, supposedly, right? And she's speaking English, oh, which was helps. your first huge yeah. sigh of relief, right? Because they, you know, can communicate with you, which is huge. Um, and she says, you know, let me help you. And I'm like, yes, please. You know, I'm just trying to have any way to get out of the situation I'm in. And so she takes me down this alleyway that was like a hoarder's paradise, Travis. I mean, there were knickknacks and papers and trash on the floor. And it was um, very interesting, to say the least. And I'm thinking to myself, what did I get myself into? And so she walks into like the hoarder's warehouse and she's talking to this woman for about what seemed like an hour, probably more like 15 minutes. Okay. And she comes out to inform me that the hotel she had brought me to was for monthly stays and the nightly stay hotel, it's brand new and it's about seven minutes away. The only way to get there is by motorcycle. And myself and my luggage are not going to fit on this motorcycle at the same time. Oh, boy. <laughs> so oh, she no. convinces me to load up everything I have, you know, all my favorite clothes, all my items, my luggage. Um, all I've got is my little, you know, fanny pack with my passport and a little bit of cash in it to get by just in case. And I wave it goodbye. And um, sure enough, the the motorcycle comes back. It picks me up. It brings me to this really nice hotel. I was the first guest there, actually, that they've had, period. Wow. It had no decorations on the wall. The women were extremely helpful. I ended up um, going to an elephant sanctuary and feeding them and bathing and swimming with them. And, and it was just the most incredible trip of my life. And your luggage made it there? And my luggage made it with me, yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, but the point of that story is you ha I learned that in those situations when push comes to shove, you really need to learn to trust yourself, right? I had no cell service. I had no way of communicating with home. I had no way of really relying on anybody else but me and, um, you know, I, and God. 
right? Yeah. So whatever higher power you choose to um, to uh, level with. And so I was, you know, praying, I was talking, and I was really had to to act completely out of faith there. And um, and it ended up working out tremendously. So. I think that there are some lessons in life that you really can only learn with two things. One, in traveling, and two, really pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. Um, You know, I saw the other day that you, you know, you've been working out a lot lately. You've been posting your pictures at the gym. Uh, You weren't feeling like going that day. So instead of doing your normal 30 minutes, you did an hour. You leaned into that discomfort, um, which was, you know, similar to my story. As I get to the street, you know, at first I'm, I was excited and nervous to even stay. But then when it got really pushed to come to shove, I made the no nonsense sense decision that I'm going to find a hotel tonight. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to leave and I'm not going to give up. And I think that really powerful things happen when you when you make those decisions. Yeah, I, I have to ask this question. How old were you at this experience? I was 22 years old. 22. Oh my gosh. Yes, I, I was get, 22. I got to tell you why I asked that question. And it's because I grew up in a really small southern country town. Yes. Ma- majority, and I love my town. I love where I grew up. I, I think it helped mold me as to who I am. Absolutely. Uh, but majority of the people that I grew up with have never been on an airplane. Oh, my goodness. Never been anywhere. Right. I mean, like, I uh, eventually moved from my small little town to Indianapolis, which is a big, small city, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a small city. (laughs) It's big to Indiana, but smaller everywhere else. And my family thought they needed a passport to come visit me. In Minnesota. Yes. And then when I come to Minnesota, oh, my gosh. Uh, now <laughs> now I'm like, oh, my goodness. How many how many flights do we need to take to get there? You know, I mean, it's just <laughs> to- totally different. They, they had no clue. Oh, and so amazing. I, you know, if I had stayed and I, I've been fortunate to have been able to do business and, and be a part of organizations that help me travel in ways that I probably would have never traveled before because I was in that small town community where you thought the world dropped off at the end of the county. Yeah. And so okay. here you are, 22, you're in Thailand and yes. can't even speak the language yes. and you're navigating. So yes. that experience took you beyond your limits. Yes. But it's yes. led to something even greater. I mean, you probably travel more than any person I know. And you're how old today? I'm 26. 26 years old. 26. Yes. I'm 44, folks. <laughs> and she has been probably to three times more places than I've been in my lifetime. So, uh-huh. and I'm curious, and maybe you don't know the answer. Uh, how many, like, uh, other countries or? How many countries? Yeah. Um, so many, you got to sit and do the math. Yeah, I've, I think I've been to... Uh, 15 different countries. Oh my goodness, 15 countries. Yes. And and I know you're a lot of what you do is surrounded by travel. It, yes. Your business as well as how you supplement your income. Yes. And so tell us a little bit about um, how you've been able to incorporate business into travel. Absolutely. So um, the company that I that I currently work for and represent is uh, the world's largest travel club. And, um, you know, when I first discovered it, I was very young and I had just taken my very first trip outside of Minnesota. Yeah, (laughs) pretty much. Um, I was actually in college and I decided to study abroad in Spain. And while living there, I had um, like about a three week gap in between two programs that I had applied for and was accepted into. And my parents came up and my brother came and um, they were the same way. You know, they had never really left Minnesota. Uh, We had been to Myrtle Beach at this point. um, But Europe, I mean, even the flight alone was just like you was out of the question. Right. It was um, it was something that 
we had never experienced anything like it. And uh, we rented this van and we drove around um, probably eight or nine different countries in two and a half weeks. And we got lost and we created incredible memories. And um, I, at that moment, realized that the current path I was on was not at all where I wanted to be. And I needed to kind of reroute and rewire um, my, my path. And so um, when I got back, my friend had shown me this travel club and I completely fell in love with the concept. I mean, the, 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 I, at my age, I finally had the ability to take the trips on my own, which was very empowering for me because I definitely wanted to be independent as a typical 18 year old woman was, yeah. you know. And um, from there, one of my biggest expenses ended up being flights. And so then I decided to also become a flight attendant so that I could fly around for free. And I've just kind of incorporated everything very intentionally um, to reach my end goal. Wow. So you, you figured out how to do a lot, what a lot of us is our end game or is our, our plan. Yes. And because I think from... Uh, the perspective of most people who are locked into the thinking of, I have to work today and I have to save for all my life so that I can travel when I retire. Right. 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 I mean, that's at least the way I viewed life when mm-hmm. I first started out is because, you know, well, first of all, coming from a small town, big family, there are eight in my family. Uh, eight kids, <laughs> ten total. Eight of Holy us kids. I'm the buckets. oldest, oldest, oldest of eight, and we couldn't afford to go, you know, even to Disney World with right. with eight kids. Right. And so you thought it, travel was something you did when you retired, but here you figured out how to do this. You're 26 years old. You've been to what do we say 15 countries. Yes. 15 countries. Yes. Uh, and what is what is the thing because it's travel club versus travel on my own figure it out by myself and it, i think we worry too like you know is is this a real thing are these right. real people is right. this just some paid actor you know <laughs> uh tell us what's the difference between a travel club and like a, a travel agent or uh, just doing it on your own Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I I am a huge proponent of any type of travel that anybody wants to do, right? And you do definitely need to find the method that works for you. Um, what I found for me was that I was very naive when it came to travel. I didn't know what to do in an airport when I first started. I um, you know, wasn't exactly sure how to, I mean, there's so many things you need to think about when you tra- uh, book traveling on your own. You have to think about airport transfers. You have to think about the excursions. You have to think about the language barrier, oh. all of these different um, things. And for the average person, that's a lot. And generally, you know, if you're planning a vacation, you're bringing one person with you, a couple families with you, your children with you. And so there's so many factors and so many things that could Uh, go wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge barrier to entry for a lot of people to kind of take the leap and go on the vacation, even though really at the end of the day, those memories that you create with the people you love when you're completely unplugged, right? Um, A lot of people, it takes them a few days to even stop vibrating from their so fast paced lives that especially in America, we live, we're so busy and we're so schedule oriented that to step away from that is one, uncomfortable and two, takes a few days just to even, um, you know, ease into. Um, And so there's, there's all these factors, but we know that when you do ease into the vacation and you are with the people that you love, the memories you create are something that are going to be with you on your deathbed. I mean, yeah. I, me and my dad still joke about the time that we got lost so horribly in Italy. Um, and that was, I mean, when, six years ago, four years ago now, right? And it's still the topic at all of our Thanksgivings, all of our Christmases, and those memories with my father are so dear to my heart. And so why are people not doing more of this would be the next question, right? Um, So the knowledge piece that you bring up, like your family wondering, do I need a passport to come to Indiana, just the city? Yes. Um, 
rings true for a lot of Americans, maybe not to that extent, but just the knowledge base. So the travel club is really handy because all of that planning and and groundwork is done for you. You simply scroll through the list of trips, pick one, you know, you can read the itineraries and activities included. You pick your trip and then you just show up. They pick you up from the hotel on 90% or from the airport and bring you to the hotel on 90% of our trips. Um, You can do as many or as little of the excursions as you'd like. Um, You have a host. So if anything goes wrong from internet to needing a doctor to, um, you know, trying to find your kid or anything that happens on a trip, um, this host will actually come in and take care of you. And you have access to that host 24 seven. If you don't speak the language, they'll translate for you if you want to buy a little hat or something like that on the beach Um, so it kind of takes all the anxiety and planning away and allows you just to you know get in be very efficient book your trip and um, just show up and that's really nice you know a lot of people when they're considering travel it's not all it's not just all those things but it's Mm -hmm. also they're considering what's the cost involved to do Mm -hmm. travel And one of the things that uh, I love about your company and organization is that they're they're buying travel in bulk, really. Yes. And and when they're doing that, they're able to pass on huge discounts to their customers. Mm -hmm. And so I I just, I I think educating people around a club versus an agent is important because I would would love to take a big trip like that and go and give uh, wash and give bath to an elephant. I mean, yeah. that sounds so cool in Thailand. I've never been yes. to Thailand. Yes. Um, so help me understand, help our listeners understand our audience at home that, you know, if, if someone was per, to participate in a, in a travel club, um, there's probably some type of membership uh, to participate and then you get the discounts. So is that Am I understanding that right? Yes, absolutely. You nailed it. So um, in our club, we do understand that cost is a huge factor for people. So like you said, we kind of operate on the same concept as Costco or Sam's Club in which you purchase a membership, but the club itself goes to all the top names in the industry like Marriott and Disney and Royal Caribbean and we'll buy thousands of their rooms, thousands of their cabins, we'll pay up front in cash. So we drive the prices way low. I mean, you cannot go to a gas station and buy a water bottle for the same price as you can buy, uh, you know, a bottle of water at Costco, right? It's like 180th of the price. So we operate on the same concept, which is really brilliant. Um, It definitely allows families to have that access then to the trips at an affordable price point. Um, You you pay a membership due to get into the club, just like Costco does. However, every dollar you put into the club, you get back to use on your travel. So it would be just like joining Costco and let's say it's $50 to join. And then they give you a fifty dollars gift card to go and, you know, buy nice. your milk. So <laughs> yes, it, they've they've really just uh, kind of life hacked the way all the way to all the issues that people have with travel, and just their main goal is to get people really um, enjoying their loved ones and, and enjoying their life to a different level. Love it. So we've talked a little bit about uh, where you started and heard that story, and and then we've got a little piece of the business, but Mm -hmm. what I know and love about you is it's just that you've used all of these things to really develop yourself professionally, personally. Uh, You've taken your experiences to a level of education. Yes. And, And so knowing that, I'd love to know, like, What's a struggle that you might have had that you've really learned from uh, Mm -hmm. that our our audience could benefit from? Absolutely. I'm so glad you asked this because the the personal growth you you go through in being in a position of sales um, brings up every self-doubt that anyone has ever had in their life. So when you make the decision to really go for it in your life and whatever you're trying to do, whether it's being a professional pianist or a wrestler or salesman or, you know, whatever your goals are, everything that you have ever had going on in your head is going to surface. And for me, my biggest struggle was truly feeling like a poser, (laughs) for lack of a better word. It was really just feeling like, um, like I was faking it, you know, like I wasn't really qualified to be sharing this knowledge with people and helping other people grow. Um, 
Although for me, personal growth has been an obsession with mine, like a driving force in my life. And it's something that I work relentlessly on every single day. And I set very specific mind goals. For example, right now, I want to be an incredible listener. And I'm reading books on listening and I'm taking college courses on listening. And, and I've already seen it, um, you know, help me relate to people on such a deeper level. It's incredible. Yeah. And, um, so back to this, this idea of, of feeling like you're not enough or, you know, um, what I've really learned through the years is just to fake it till you make it. I have had the privilege of knowing some incredible people. And a lot of people are self-made millionaires who've gone from nothing to everything and they're completely self-made. And in talking to them, what I realize is that everyone is faking it to some degree. Everyone in their career has had a point where they have to, um, you know, take leaps that they don't feel like they're qualified to make yet. Yeah. Um, even my in the my favorite book that I'm reading right now, um, it's a New York Times bestseller. And the author of this book, in the book, she says, I'm writing this book. Uh, as I was writing this book, I was completely broke. I had just humbled myself and gone to a friend and borrowed $80,000 to sign up for a personal career coach. Um, going into debt when I, I mean, that was an enormous amount of income, maybe two years of salary from where she was at in order to do this. And the book was about how to make money. Oh. <laughs> which is so ironic. And today she has a seven figure business. And so um, just realizing for me that it's okay to not have the answers and it's okay to have faith in yourself, to have faith in your higher power and to, to move and take steps forward, even when you're scared or even when you're not sure that the step you're taking is the correct step, but just to keep moving yeah. has been the biggest transformation and realization that I've had to date in my career. Yeah, I'm glad you shared that because I think I think all of us, it doesn't matter what level you are, as a business person, professional, there's some level of self-doubt in there. Yes. Now I, I do I do daily affirmations. Mm -hmm. I have I have a goal board that I see at least twice a day. Yes. But there but there still sometimes finds this little speck of something in the back of my mind yes. that goes, you know, you can't do this or you're not good enough to do this or whatever. Absolutely. And I have to just get above it and I have to go, you know what, uh, I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to do it and just push through. Mm -hmm. And I think the message here is that you are worthy. We're all worthy. Yes. And, and we have to consistently be networking up. Right. Yes. I mean, because if we are consistently networking with people who are not as great as we are, what what direction are we taking our professional development? Absolutely. Taking it down. Absolutely, Travis. But if we're consistently putting ourselves in rooms with people who are better than us, who make more money than us, who are better educated than us, had more experiences than us, yes. we're taking ourselves up. Yes. We're moving ourselves in the right direction. And, and it's been said that you're the product of the five people that you spend the most time with. So yes. I want to spend myself, my, I want to spend my time with the people that I don't think I belong with. Yet, yes. Right. <laughs> oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the things that I really, that, that's the nail on the head. I, um, I could not agree more with your statements. I, and I, I encourage to take it even one step further here. I just took a, a three-day self-development course down in Cabo where you got into the nitty gritty of everything that's going on in your mind. And the person giving the conference usually speaks to stadiums of, I mean, he sold out Cowboys Stadium uh, three oh years ago. And there was just 200 of us one on one with this gentleman. And one of the main topics was really considering your energy bucket. And we each start out each day with a bucket of energy and really focusing on what feeds that bucket and what drains that bucket. And one of the main things that I think for a lot of people will feed that bucket is your network. Mm 
There are people that when you have coffee with them or when you're on the phone with them, even if it's just 15 minutes, when you hang up that phone or when you leave that coffee date, you're ready to run through the wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're ready to take over the world. And then there's other people where you leave and like you always say, you either have to take a shower or yeah. a nap or yeah. something because you are just so depleted. Yeah. And what if the next meeting you have is with someone like Travis Sims, who meeting him and networking mm -hmm. with you you could could make or break your business but you've allowed your bucket to be completely empty before you got there and now that that business deal the key sale or the key partnership falls through because you weren't aware of your bucket so one thing I would really encourage young entrepreneurs or seasoned entrepreneurs really to focus on is start documenting either mentally or actually on paper what fills my bucket and what drains my bucket you know, for AGC, every time I leave there, the networking group, I have met somebody new that inspires me so incredibly, right? Um, another thing that really feeds my bucket is music. But you have to be extremely intentional because how many times do you leave with a song stuck in your head off the radio? Yep. I mean, just the chorus playing over and over again. Do you want that to be an affirmation like you read to yourself at night? Or do you want it to be something that lets you sulk in your current circumstance, right? So I have a specific playlist that has music that just amps me up. And if I every meeting I go into, I play those songs. Um, it might be for you something like hanging out with, you know, your, your newborn or a niece or a nephew or a family member that you really love or a best yeah. friend or meditating by yourself. You know, it doesn't necessarily matter what it is. You just have to find those things for yourself and make sure you limit your time with the liabilities to your bucket and surround yourself with the time with the assets to your bucket and just continue to be constantly aware of how much time you give to each thing. And I'm not saying eliminate the people in your life that are important to you because maybe they're having going through something, but you do have to be aware how much you give to that. Yeah. Um, they definitely deserve your time and your love, especially if um, usually they do feed your bucket, right? Or if they are a very loyal friend. Um, but it is also okay to cut a meeting short or to separate yourself in a healthy way to the point where you would never get so depleted that you can't function or accomplish your goals. Yeah. There, there are people that I, I just want to soak up and spend more time with. Yes. And then there are people that I just know I need to do in small doses. Right. Like just a little bit. <laughs> you, you know, yeah, uh, I, I think about like when people come into the room, mm -hmm. are they lighting up the room? Or are they sucking the light out of the room? Right. <laughs> What's happening? And and I just think that that's so important. I love that you uh, seek out knowledge. Every time I like it, we're connected on social media, and you're at a workshop or you're at a conference, and and you haven't. And the other thing I love about what you're doing is that like travel is not the thing that's keeping you away from growth. Right. right. I mean, you're using right. what you've learned in your industry to be like, I'm going to this uh, workshop in Cabo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm just happy to be going to the one in Minneapolis. <laughs> but no matter where you are, you, you know, I think our, our message here is that continually be seeking growth. Yes. You know, always. Yes. And no matter what level you are, just just try to level up just a little right. bit, a little right. bit more. Yes. And and so now I'm going to ask you a question that that's dear to me, and that is that you know because you have been a part of AGC from the very beginning. Like there was, I mean, I was member number one. You're probably in the first five people in wow. in AGC membership. And now we're 10 months in, we're 300 plus members, we're looking at what we're going to do next year uh, as far as opening five states that people don't share their goals because they're afraid they won't accomplish them, right? But, but I, I share my goals out loud and often because I know that there are people that will help me get there. Mm -hmm. So five states in 2020 is our goal. So what is it for you that you love about AGC? Is it, and if you could narrow it down to one thing, because there's probably a handful of things, but is there is it the connections you're making? Is it the talks you're hearing? Or what is it that, because you, you spend your time a lot of places 
and you're traveling so many places, but you make at least one a month on, on average for ADC. So I'm yes. just curious, you know, what is it for you? Okay. Um, so I will tie this back into networking and you become the top five people you surround yourself with. And even with the bucket of energy, um, the quality of people, because everybody at AGC chooses to be there. They take a couple hours of their day um, between one and six times a month or more if they do different pop-up events. And they work on themselves and they work on their business. And that attracts a very specific kind of individual. And those are the kind of individuals that I love to meet. Um, there are people in AGC who have taught me so much. I mean, no offense to my professors in college, but these are the types of skills that will truly allow you to succeed in your life. And those are the types of people that teach me in AGC. And I, I, can, I cannot stress enough the quality and the caliber of people that are in each of those rooms at every AGC event. Oh, that's awesome. You know, you mentioned college and, and networking. I often joke that it's the thing they don't teach in college is right. how to do networking. <laughs> like they teach you yeah. how to do whatever uh, profession you've chosen, yes. uh, all these things about it. But we, we know that in any industry, it doesn't matter. It, it's not necessarily what you know, but it's who you know. Yes. So, I mean, yes, you need to be you need to be the expert. You need to represent and, and, and be on your game. But often getting you where you want to go comes through people. Every single thing I've ever gotten of huge value in my life has come from another person, not from a textbook. Yeah. And I genuinely mean that. I mean, I have shaken the hands of Tony Robbins. You know, I have had just some really deep, profound moments in my life and Every single one of those come from a person. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to seek these people and, you know, be kind, be friends with them, network, get to know your community. And um, it, it, will, it will transform your life. A, something like AGC is incremental to not only your growth in your business, which is obviously crucial, but also your growth as a person. And I think that everyone needs to have that awareness to really begin to work on it. And you can, the nice thing about AGC is you can start from anywhere in this process. You don't have to be an expert networker to come because there are talks every single week that help you grow and learn how to become better. On top of that, you have people like Travis who have how many years in the industry of networking? 15 years. Now I'm telling my age. <laughs> 15, <laughs> 15 years. years. Yeah. And so, you know, they say it takes 10,000 hours. And I'm yeah. sure in those 15 years you've achieved oh, yeah. that. You are an expert in the art of networking. And you're the one choosing the people to speak at the events. So it really goes to show that if you want to begin to grow, want to begin your business or whatever level you're at and just willing to become better and level up, you, you can learn the skill from from people like Travis, who he's the founder of AGC. So I think that, um, you know, take the leap, don't be scared, move forward with your career and join a networking group that will level you up. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I have always felt like I'm not the smartest person in the room, mm -hmm. which I'm okay with. Yeah, it's a good thing. But I surround myself with people that I think are the smartest people in the room. And, and that's what I love about what I do is in the world of networking is that I get to connect amazing people together. Mm -hmm. And that's just what feeds my soul. It's in the depth of who I am. It's like, you know what? I may not be able to help you with this thing, but let me get you across the room because I know that this person can. Yes. And also, I just want to uh, speak to our audience for just a second. Okay. And, that, and that is that, you know, when you're networking and when you're meeting people and you're deciding who you're spending your time with, don't underestimate someone's oh. network. Don't underestimate the value that they can bring to you. Because I'm 44, yes. 
you're 26. And I could have easily upon meeting you thought, you know what, she's 26. How could she impact me? Mm-hmm. How, how could uh, she teach me something because I'm, you know, this much older than you. But it, I'm so thankful that I was smart enough to uh, recognize your talent, your experience, and and the level of professionalism that you bring and brought you into my inner circle because uh, I learn from you regularly. And I, I just wanted to say I appreciate you and make sure our audience knows to, to just find the right people and put them around you. Thank you, Travis. That means a lot to me. So probably by this point, people are wanting to know how they can travel too. They're probably <laughs> going, you know what? This sounds too good to be true. And I would love to be in Thailand. I'd love to be taking dream trips. And I'd love mm-hmm. to be able to do it on an affordable budget. And if someone is interested in what it takes to participate in a travel club, how to find you, where, where do we find you? Absolutely. So um, two of my favorite sources that you can kind of explore and see what I've done in my travels are my Facebook and Instagram. Um, So will my name be on this this podcast? Yes. Okay. If you notice in my first name, it has two N's as in November. If you type in my full name, you'll have no problem finding me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, So feel free to reach out to me that way. Also, um, you can just send me a message as well. I love to get coffee. I also do a lot of um, video chatting on Zoom calls. So if this is something you're interested, go ahead and reach out. My number is 612-810-5809. Again, 612-810-5809. Just shoot me a message. I'd be more than willing to help you and your family take those trips or a honeymoon or anything that would that would really impact your life. So Awesome. Well, I want to say thank you so much for being on the AGC Experience podcast. Uh, I, what I love about what we're doing here is I get to share amazing professionals like you with the world and uh, get your message out and learn learn from each other. That's what this whole thing is about. It's because mm-hmm. someone will listen to this podcast and then it gets shared with someone else and then it finds its way back into the social media. <laughs> Five years from now, someone's yes. listening to us here today. And so thank you for doing that. Audience, if you're watching or listening at home and you're and you're deciding, Am I, do I want to travel more? Uh, seek out Samantha. But also, if you connect to her on social media, I know you're going to be uh, just enamored with the wisdom and the things that you're going to learn from her. She does a lot of uh, Facebook lives and they're always just uplifting and confidence building and we appreciate you and all that you do. Thank you, Travis. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. This podcast was produced by Elation Studios. Go to www.elationstudios.co. That's www.elationstudios.co to learn more. Elation Studios. Discover your voice. Clarify your vision. Build your life.